this is long overdue. Um, I will do a first trimester update uh, video for this pregnancy. So for my first trimester, um, I started out um, just always feeling cruddy. I always, you know, was nauseous and everything. I was not as nauseous, not even anywhere close to as nauseous as I was with my daughter Emily. Um, with her, I was I was definitely throwing up all the time, regularly, you know, a few times a day. I was definitely very nauseous with her, and, and I definitely, I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't keep anything down. I could not eat anything other than a specific type of microwavable mac and cheese. And, um, the way I got around that and, and was able to actually get nutrition into my body when I was pregnant with her was, um, I drank those Carnation Breakfast Essentials drinks. I, I, I drank those all the time just to get some nutrition in, um, instead of just filling up with microwavable mac and cheese, which is not good for anybody that's not healthy. Um, I, I had to get some nutrition for her, so... I lived on those um, and for the first like four months I believe it was I think I was somewhere around yeah I think it was around four ish maybe even four and a half months but I want to say four months when I was finally able to eat more Ooh, we got some flyaway hairs over here sorry I've been working all day um my hair's a little wild um but this time around I I have been able to eat a lot more things. I have actually don't really even drink those carnation things much. I, I bought a bunch of um, the mix and as well as the pre-mixed drinks um, of those just because I, I knew that's what I had to live on last time um, when I got nauseous. So when I started getting nauseous again this time around, I, um, I picked up a bunch of those just to prepare and all right, you know, if I can't eat anything, I'll, I'll drink these. And I just wasn't as big on them this time and I was actually able to eat a lot more things um for my whole first trimester it was just more of everything sounded gross to me I had severe food aversions to, you know to everything I I could only eat whatever sounded good at the moment and five minutes later it could change and I never knew what I actually wanted until like right when I needed it so it was like you know what I need this right now but I, I don't want it in an hour like I need it now <laughs> it was really frustrating for all of us thanks to Matt for um, sticking with me through all of that that was uh, pretty rough but he tried his best to um, do whatever he could to make me be able to eat things and you know get things that would make me happy so that was good I've been having cravings for sure um, and and I will, you know, be dying for one specific thing. And it has to be like, you know, chicken wings from this specific place or Red Robin's onion rings. And I don't even like onions, but Red Robin's onion rings when I was pregnant with Emily and, and then this pregnancy, I both times I craved them. Um, but I will, the wings was my biggest craving. And that was because I wanted it for so long before I actually got them. And that was because I wanted them from this one specific place from a place that Matthew used to do security at. I needed them, but it was not exactly a close drive, so we didn't go. And, you know, we're tight on money, and so it was, we weren't going to spend the money on gas to drive all the way out there and then spend all the money on all those wings. And then, you know, I thought that I would want them all the time, so it was just like we weren't going to keep doing that. But eventually, we actually had some gift certificates um, that we used on a sale day at um, Buffalo Wild Wings. And so we got a bunch of wings, and they were delicious, and I ate them all, and then my craving was gone. I wanted those wings for over a month. I finally got them, and then Matthew stocked up on, you know, some wings that he could make himself. He knew exactly how they seasoned them at this one place and everything. So he was like, oh, I'll make them from home. It'll be a lot cheaper. And then I can make them whenever you want. And it's pretty cheap to um, keep stocked on the chicken for him. 
So I was like, all right, sure. And he made them about a week after we or got the Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, he made them and they came out kind of funky because um, we just, it, both of us were mixing up the stuff and, and we kind of messed it up a little bit because we altered, you know, the amounts of everything um, to make, you know, less or more or whatever it was. I uh, forget how we altered it, but we altered something and um, it just came out kind of funky. We also baked them instead of deep frying them, which is what the recipe we had um, would called for was said to deep fry them, so that also threw it off. Um, anyway, they tasted kind of funny, and uh, but they tasted good. I ate a good amount of them, let me tell you that. Um, but my craving was gone. Uh, he goes, oh, do you want me to buy some more? They're on sale. Da -da -da. I was like, I actually don't really even care, so <laughs> I don't need them. I mean, we can get them. They sound good, but I don't really need them. And he's like, oh, okay, well, that was gone fast just immediately um some days I will be craving a peanut butter and jelly sandwich most of the time I'm craving something that's pricey though you know like the chicken wings or what is it oh I, I needed Shakey's potatoes they're mojo potatoes I needed those all last week because I passed by a Shakey's on my way to Costco um and all of a sudden I just needed their potatoes so that night we made breakfast potatoes and stuff like that and I I got my potato fix and it, just little things but um most of the time it's it's things that are pricey that I crave um but we're able to kind of like oh we'll make a different version of this or we'll do this out or the other and I'm able to kind of get my fix without um spending a ton of money and going broke on every new craving but um it's been pretty funny Last time around, I didn't really get any huge cravings. I just couldn't eat anything for a long time. And then when I finally could, I was like, eat everything kind of deal. But um, that's been fun. So this pregnancy has been completely opposite from my pregnancy with my first daughter. And it went smoother. But then once I thought I was past the nausea phase, like once I thought it, my nausea was going away... I didn't throw up for the whole first part of my pregnancy. I didn't throw up at all. The one time I spit up, like literally just spit up. It was just a tiny little bit and I spit and was fine. I thought I was going to throw up. I pulled over on the side of the road. I was on my way to work. Spit was fine. That was it. So through that whole first trimester, I didn't throw up or anything until the very tail end when my nausea was starting to go away and I was like, oh yeah, I feel a lot better. You know, I think my nausea's going away. I think I'm fine. I think I, I got away with, with no real throwing up. All of a sudden, one night, I was throwing up over and over and over and over all night long. And I was at work at the trampoline park that I work at. I literally kept having to run and throw up in the bathroom. And then come back, and I was fine. And then all of a sudden, whoops, excuse me, let me go again. You know, like all night long and then I was fine after that and then actually the day after that I actually called out of work um I woke up so emotional I literally was bawling tears because Matthew accidentally ate my last granola bar I, I had bought him a kind that he likes and I had my own kind that I like the little chewy ones with the chocolate drizzle on them it is me I like chocolate um well he was on his way to work he goes to work early early in the morning when it's still dark and he just grabbed really quick so he could be on his way out the door he grabbed a granola bar and it happened to be my last little chocolate drizzle one when I woke up and saw that I literally was bawling my eyes out I called him you ate my last granola I was going crazy I was bawling over that a granola bar a granola bar I, we live across the street from the store that I bought them from. I could just go to the store and buy another box, like, and they were on sale. So it was not like I could I could just go get them on sale. Like I was fine, but it was the end of the world for me that that morning. Everything I was super emotional over. I I was my whole body was shaking. I felt terrible from throwing up all the night before. Everything was just horrible. So I I called. Luckily, one of my good friends is or was manager on shift the next day and so I, I was able to call her and be like you know what like I can't cover the shift is there any possible way someone can I'll come in if no one can but is there any possible way that someone can cover for me I had a really short shift 
so she goes, yeah, no problem, I got it. Um, I have someone who will take care of it. Done. I went, thank you so much. I was crying, talking to her, like, oh my god, you're the best thing ever, thank you. And I, like, come on now. I was a mess, so I didn't go to work that day. Um, so that was just all kinds of craziness. But then, um, after that I was fine, but then every so often, like once or twice a week after that, I would, I would throw up more. Um, yeah, that's gone away now. I don't feel nauseous anymore. Um, life's pretty good, but my whole first trimester was kind of like fine, but I just felt yucky all the time. And then it just was like crap. <laughs> um, but I mean, I have to say, I can't really complain. Most there are a lot of women have it a lot worse you know like my first time you know having when I had my daughter I was nauseous the whole time throwing up all the time like it was a lot worse so I gotta count my blessings and you know count myself lucky for uh not having it as bad um so that's something to be thankful for and um life is just crazy so that that was basically the main event of my first trimester um now into my second trimester I'm getting, you know, the heartburn, I'm just burping all the time, a little bits of heartburn, whereas my last pregnancy, I, I didn't get heartburn until, like, the very end, like, in my third trimester, I was popping Tums all the time, and I had, like, the real heartburn stuff, like, you're, like, the it feels like you're burping fire, but, um, but right now, I'm just, like, I can't stop burping, and it, it's, like, a hint of heartburn every time, so it's, it's just gross, but I have a jug of Tums in my purse for at all times. I got Matthew to get me a good bulk pack at Costco because I needed them. Um, and he did a big Costco haul thing, so um, he was able to grab those for me at a, at a good price, you know, better price than they normally run for. So, um, that was always nice. I love Costco. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of any other big things that happened during first trimester. But, uh, no, yeah, now into my second trimester, I'm not nauseous very much. I just, I get that heartburn a little bit, and I am increasingly more tired. You know, as the weeks go on, I'm just exhausted. Um, I've got that second job that is super, super active, and so it's just, I'm using more energy than I'm taking in. But now I'm able to eat more than I was before. I just have to find the time to make it happen, because <laughs> I go there early in the morning, and Anywho, um, so basically an almost uneventful first trimester. I'm glad it went smoothly. We did find out the, that, um, you know, we, we found out whether we're having a boy or a girl. Uh, we found out at, I think it was the day before I was 14 weeks. So go over to the video that, um, it should have just been uploaded um, by the time I put this up, or it, it should be up by now. So go on over and check that out. Uh, that's really exciting. I'm very excited to, to tell everybody. Um, Emily's getting more and more excited. In fact, when we got that ultrasound done, um, the lady actually, she asked me if I had felt kicked yet. And I was only, you know, I think a day before 14 weeks, so I hadn't felt any kicks yet. And most people don't um, at that early on. You know, some do, but I, most don't. Um, I definitely didn't with our daughter, um, Emily. And so I was like, no, no, I haven't. She goes, I'm actually really amazed that you haven't felt this baby kick. This baby was going wild, wild, like nonstop moving. Whereas when I got that same ultrasound done with Emily around the same time, I think I was maybe 15 weeks when I found out with her. Sorry, she's sleeping right behind me. Um, I had eaten, like, you know, ice cream and some strawberries with sugar on them and stuff like that to, like, wake up the baby to make her, you know, show us if she was a boy or a girl. And the ner the lady still had to keep, like, poking and prodding to get her to show us, you know, are you a boy or a girl? But this time, nope, wiggle worm, knew right away. Anyway, um... That's all I wanted to share with you guys, and I'm really excited to be able to do that. So, uh, I hope you go on over and check that out. We are excited. Now we're in the second trimester, and we're on the up and up. Things are getting lots better, so we'll see you soon with our next update.